Um, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be going over the 4-1 test review. And what I'm going to be doing while I'm talking about this stuff is rather than going and solving every single problem for y'all, um, I'll instead solve about half of them and talk about where you can get notes for these things. So you may see me switch over to my calendar to kind of talk about what day do we cover certain materials. I know my calendar is messy. This is for me, not for y'all. So we'll, we'll just talk about it. Okay, going back to this. So question one and two are just asking you to find the inverse of each function. Let's pull down a bit. And so what they're asking you to do is go through the steps. Uh, we talked about steps being step one is, let me fix this, is going to be rewrite. So something kind of like this. Step two is switch x and y. So something where x equals y minus four over five. And step three is solve for y. Now in this case, both sides are, sorry, the side with the y is being divided by five. So what we want to do is we want to multiply because that's the opposite. So if I multiply both sides by five, then what I now have is 5x equals 4 minus, sorry, y minus 4. And then from there, I can just add 4 to both sides. And it becomes 5x plus 4 equals y. And that should be our inverse. So that method of inversing is something that we covered, um, not on the first day back, but we covered it here on January 5th. So I would recommend looking over that day. Okay. Now, um, so that's what you would do on the next problem. Now, one thing to note, you see how there's an x squared here. That means the inverse of that is going to be a square root. So just expect to square root both sides at some point in your problem. All right. Now, the next set of questions, question three through six, are asking you to use the function to find the composition or to evaluate the functions. So the first two problems, f of negative two, g of negative one, are just saying take the number on the inside. So in the first one, it's negative two, and plug it into the function, which is here. So instead of three x squared minus two, we'll have three times negative two squared minus two. And if I do that, I plug that into my calculator. Let's grab a calculator real quick. I uh, see something under here that would work. All right. So I'd have three times negative two squared minus two. I would get 10. So that's my answer. That's all we're doing. So same idea for g of x. Um, and we can do compositions of functions. So with five, what you would do is you would take the negative one here and we're plugging into g first. So g of negative one is five times negative one plus three. Plugging that into our calculator would give you negative two. So in other words, what we really have is we have f of negative two. And so what we can do is we can then take that and plug that into our f function. Our f function being three x squared minus two, but we're just going to plug in negative two for x. Plugging that into our calculator, let's see, three times negative two. Wait, this is the exact same thing that we got before. Okay, regardless, it's going to give us 10. So our final answer is 10. So that's how we can do it if we have a function and function, but we're evaluating for a particular x, particular number. What if we have something that's like this on number six, where it's a function and a function? Well, what we can do is we can just go uh, work on our outside function. So in this case, our outside function is g. So we would have 5x plus 3. Our inside function here is h, so we can just plug that on the inside. And that's our setup. As far as simplifying it, it would just be a matter of combine like terms. Um, see what we can combine together, order of operations. So 
we have a times five and we have a divide by five. So those should cancel. So I would really have x minus three plus three. And then I have a minus three plus three is zero. So I just have x. So that would be my composition. Okay, now using composition to prove things are inverse. Oh, uh, real quick on these problems up here, we covered those um, on that January 5th day as well. Um, actually, no, we covered those on January 9th and 10th. And then we did on 11th because this wasn't an RA. This was just a continuation of that. Okay. So, going on to this stuff, composition of functions proving things are inverses. What we're doing here is we can just put one in the other. If it simplifies out to x, like problem 6 does, then we're good. So, something like this, if I wanted to put this on the inside of here, what I would have is I would have x squared plus 1 on the outside and square root of x minus 1 on the inside. I'm essentially putting f of x inside g of x. And if I simplify this out, well, I have a squared and a square root. Those would cancel. So I now have x minus 1 plus 1. Minus 1 plus 1 is 0, so I have x. So yes, they are inverses. I can't write today. OK. Let's go on. So let's talk about domain. Um, domain's the possible x values, right? Okay. Sorry. Sophie just hopped up in her chair. Okay. So domain of this thing, um, let's graph it. So if we do y equals, clear these things out and negative square root of x minus seven plus three. And we can see that starting over here, okay, on the right side, uh, let's see if I can get a mouse over this. Nope, you can't see my mouse, darn. Okay, so it's starting on the right side over here and going to the right. So we're going towards positive infinity because we're going to the right side. Um, let me just kind of do a quick sketch. So we're starting over here and going this way. And the starting point, well, if I go to my table, I can see a whole bunch of errors. Starting point is seven, three, which kind of corresponds with these numbers here. So in other words, I'm starting at x value of seven. I'm going to the right side, which is towards the positive side. So I'm going towards positive infinity. So my domain is from 7 to positive infinity. Basically it's going to start from one of those numbers. It's going to go to either positive or negative infinity. We can also write this as x is greater than or equal to 7. Same thing means the same. So it's just the possible x values. Okay. So graph of the discrete function is all right on the right what are the points that are contained in this stuff? Okay, so this function f is the original function. This function f1, let's do it in a different color, f to the negative one is the inverse. So we're saying, hey, we have these points. What's the, what's the inverse? So the original points, like this one is negative six, zero. And then this one is negative two, negative 4. And this one is 0, 5. And this one is 3, negative 1. So the inverse of those would be just switch the x and y values. Something kind of like this. All right. Let's go on from here. So circle all the fun following that apply to the square root function. Okay, so to clarify, this square root function is the parent function. So it's starting at 0, 0. It's going up and to the right. That's what the graph looks like. So as we go to the right, x increases. Or sorry, as we go to the right, as x increases, y increases. 
So it is not a decreasing function, it's an increasing one. The graph has the x-intercept at zero, zero. Yeah, it touches the x-axis exactly there. Cool. Uh, let me follow the instructions and circle. The range is greater than or equal to zero. Yeah, that's true. Our y values start at zero and they go up from there. So that works. Domain is all real numbers. No, it's not all real numbers. It is only the positive numbers. Remember, it's zero to positive infinity. The graph has a maximum at zero, zero. No, it's not a maximum, it's a minimum. The lowest number is at zero, zero. You can have a square root with a maximum, but if you did, it'd be something that looks like this. It doesn't have to start at zero, zero, too. So we could have something like this. It has to be going down. Um, so that's not the case here. Uh, it's an increasing function. Yes, we established that on question one. Uh, domain is x is greater than or equal to zero. Yeah. That's exactly what we established on question D, on part D. Okay, so question 11. Parent square root, translated left three units, vertically stretched by a factor of four, reflected both. Okay, we have a whole bunch of transformations here. So let's go through all these. So what we're gonna start with is our, um, our basic function, y equals square root of x. Um, so let's start with Let's start with this color. Translate left three units. What that's going to mean is I need to subtract three on the inside. If I need to check this, what I can do is I can plug my, no, oh, let me show you. Let's grab a TI real quick. So if I do basic parent function, let me pause. And we're back. All right, Sophie has successfully scared off the person minding their own business, walking on the other side of the street. All right, as I was saying, if you wanted to check this on your calculator, plug the parent function into y1, plug just your change into y2, and see what happens. And take a look, and move to the right. That's, that's not what we want to happen, we want it to move to the left. So let's try a plus sign inside instead. And yeah, there we go. Okay. Next bit, vertically stretched by a factor of four. So what that's going to mean is we need to put a four out front. We need to multiply it by four. All right, reflected over the y-axis, or sorry, over the x-axis. That's going to put a negative sign out front. And tr finally, translate up one unit. So that's going to be a plus one on the outside. So now we have a new function. Now, what's the equation of this based on the graph of the right? Well, what we'll do is let's start with what point is this? And it looks like it's 0.2 comma 1 because we can see that there's 1, 2, 3, 4 spots. So it makes sense that this is 1, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. Just kind of counts by that. So we're counting by 2s. Okay, so we have 0.2 comma 1. So that's going to tell us that we have y equals square root of x minus two plus one. Oh, there we go. Okay, finally, uh, we need to figure out our a value. So what we can do is we can go over one unit and we go up one unit. So that means that we are translated, or sorry, that means our, our general slope is, is one over one. We can have a positive, a value of positive one. I'm sorry, I have some wonderful animals. I'm almost done here. So if this little guy could just not eat out of the trash, that'd be cool. All right, so let's do the next part. List the transformations to obtain the function from the parent square root function. Okay, so we're talking about transformations again. So what we have here is we'll just kind of focus on any numbers or negative signs out front. So on the first one, we have a four out front and we have a minus one. The four is going to vertically stretch and the minus one is going to shift right by a factor of one, or by one unit. First on question 14, the negative sign's doing one thing, the two's doing another thing, 
and the minus phi is doing another thing. So I would expect three transformations here. Okay. Um, also, if you wanted to go on on transformations, we talked about transformations on January twelfth. So I would recommend looking at that. All right. And the last little bit. This function is translated four units down to fill out y2, fill out the table, match this. Well, if we are going down four units, I would expect all our y values to be four units lower. I would also expect our function to be subtracting four on the end. So we can just take our original function. I don't need y1 anymore. Take our original function and then just put a minus four on there. And that, that's how we could get what's in this table. Um, we can also just use common sense. Zero minus four would give me negative four. One minus four would give me negative three. Uh, two minus uh, four would give me negative two. <laughs> One second. And we're back. Okay, so anyway, um, after all that, we should have a reasonable idea for the table. So both putting the equation into your calculator, getting the table, or using some common sense to get the table uh, should be able to get you answers. Because I seem to remember on your actual test, this may be a multiple choice question. So hopefully that kind of covers most of the review. If you have questions, just let me know. Have a good one, y'all.